ever catch yourself just like completely geeking out about how we can talk? I mean, really think about it. It's wild, right? We can share these like super complicated thoughts, tell stories, debate about literally anything. Even something as mundane as the weather. Oh. It, it's seriously one of those things that makes us human, you know. But it really makes you wonder, like, when did we actually develop this ability? Where did it all begin? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Well, good news, everyone. Today, we're going deep on some brand new genomic evidence that's trying to crack that very mystery. Oh, exciting. I love this kind of stuff. Me too. We've got this really cool genomic study and the actual research paper that dives into all the nitty gritty details. Yeah. So consider this our mission to figure out using this evidence when humans develop this capacity for language the way we know and love it today. I'm all in. <laughs> it's a puzzle that's captivated scientists forever, right? I mean, for so long, we've relied on these concrete clues like fossils, artifacts, that kind of thing, to try to piece together our history. But language is tricky. Yeah, it's not like you can dig up a conversation from a thousand years ago. Exactly. It doesn't leave these neat little footprints in the physical world. So this new approach, looking at our genes, it's like opening up a whole new avenue to understand this ancient mystery. It's like a whole different kind of detective work. Yeah. Okay, so the big question, as we've set it up, is all about when human language first popped up. Mm. And I've always found it crazy how much the estimates vary. Like, depending on what you're looking at, whether it's the evolution of our vocal cords or, you know, case paintings and symbolic stuff. But let's dive into this genomic argument. Can you kind of break down the main idea for us? For sure. So the core logic here relies on a few basic observations, right? First off, think about it. Every single human population on Earth, no matter where they are or their culture, they all use language. That's true. I've never thought about it like that. It's universal. Totally. And secondly, think about this. We have this incredible variety of languages, thousands of them, all these unique sound structures. It's mind blowing. But beneath that diversity, linguistic research suggests they all share a common ancestor, a kind of proto language. Like a linguistic family tree. Exactly. So if all these diverse groups separated by continents and oceans, if they all have language and those languages have these deep underlying connections, it points to one really compelling conclusion. Let me guess. It means the capacity for language was there from the very beginning, like yeah. before these groups even started branching off and spreading across the planet. Bingo. It's like imagining finding the same family heirloom in different branches of a family. You know, it must have come from a common ancestor, something that existed before the family split up. That's a great analogy. So based on this genetic data, what's the timeline we're looking at here? What's the big date we need to keep in mind? The key finding, and this is where it gets really interesting, comes from a super in-depth analysis, actually a meta-analysis, of 15 different genomic studies. 15? Wow. That's a lot of data. Right. These studies have been done over the past, oh, a couple of decades, and they've looked at different parts of our genetic makeup, like the Y chromosome, you know, the one passed down from fathers to sons, mitochondrial DNA, which comes from the mother's side, and even complete genomes, the whole shebang. So a really comprehensive look. Totally. And what they consistently show is that the first major splits within Homo sapiens, like those early migrations out of Africa, those happened roughly 135,000 years ago. Wait, back up a sec. 135,000 years? That's a long time. It is a mind-boggling amount of time. But think about what that means. If those splits happened back then, and those groups already carried the seeds of language with them, the ability to develop it had to be in place at least by that point. So the capacity for language, this thing that defines us as humans, it was already part of the package back then. It seems that way. In fact, the research paper actually lays it out really clearly. It says, quote, linguistic capacity was present in the Homo sapiens population 135,000 years ago. Mm. No ambiguity there. That's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about this paper. So it was published in Frontiers in Psychology, and it basically brings together all this evidence, this genetic data, and makes the case for this early timeline. And it's a team effort, lots of researchers involved. You've got Shigeru Miyagawa from MIT and the University of Sao Paulo, Rob DeSal and Ian Tattersall, both from the American Museum of Natural History, just to name a few. So it's not just one study, one perspective, but this synthesis of all these different pieces of research. Exactly, and that's what makes it so compelling. It's like. The more we study these genomes using all these sophisticated techniques, 
focusing on different parts of the genetic code, the more they all seem to point to this same time frame around 135,000 years ago. The authors even mention an earlier review from back in 2017. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was similar, but didn't have access to all the data we have now. So this newer analysis, it's like a sharper, more focused image of our past. The picture is becoming clearer, you know. That's amazing. Okay, so we're getting a better sense of when this capacity for language might have emerged. But let's talk about what we actually mean by human language here. Because, I mean, tons of animals communicate in their own ways, right? What makes us so different? That is the key question. And the researchers do a great job of highlighting what sets us apart. It's not just about making sounds or signals. The magic, the thing that makes human language unique is this dual structure. We have a lexicon, which is basically our vocabulary, all the words we use. And then we've got grammar or syntax, which is basically the set of rules for how we combine those words. It's like, think of words as Lego bricks. Okay, I like where this is going. Right, we've got all these bricks, but it's the grammar that tells us how to connect them, how to build towers, spaceships, whatever we can imagine. That's what allows us to generate like an infinite number of new expressions, new ideas. So it's not just about having words, it's about having this system, this rule book, that lets us combine them in limitless ways. Precisely. And as far as we know, no other animal communication system has this kind of parallel structure. They might have signals, calls, even ways to convey certain things, but not this generative power, this ability to constantly create and understand new meanings. It's a game changer. I see. It's like we've got the ultimate language toolkit. Okay, so if we had this cognitive ability, this blueprint for language 135,000 years ago, does that mean our ancestors were already having these complex conversations? telling stories around the campfire, devoting philosophy? Well, not so fast. The research actually suggests something really fascinating. It dives into this idea that humans might have had the capacity, the brain power for language for a pretty long time before it actually became this super sophisticated communication system we use today. You mean like a lag time? Exactly. Like imagine having a brand new computer, top of the line hardware, super fast processor, tons of memory, you've got all the potential in the world, but then you realize the software, the operating system, the programs, those haven't caught up yet. No, oh, I feel that. I'm not the most tech-savvy person. Right. It's like having the potential but not necessarily using it to its fullest. So there's this idea that language might have started as this private cognitive system, almost like a tool for thinking, for organizing thoughts internally, before it evolved into the main way we communicate with each other. That's wild. So language as this internal process before it became externalized. Okay, I got to ask, this timeline, 135,000 years ago, how does that match up with what we see in archaeology? You know, those clues about when symbolic behavior emerged. This is where it all starts to connect, and it gets really exciting. So around 100,000 years ago, we see this noticeable increase in what archaeologists call symbolic activity. Think about things like deliberate markings on objects, not just random scratches, but patterns, maybe even early forms of art. Like those cave paintings everyone loves. Exactly. Things like that suggest abstract thought, representing concepts, ideas beyond just the physical world. And there's also the use of fire to process ochre, you know, that red pigment. Oh, yeah, I've seen that in museums. Right. And they didn't just stumble upon red rocks. They were deliberately using fire to change the properties of materials. Probably for body decoration, maybe rituals, who knows. The point is, these behaviors point to symbolic thinking, using symbols to represent something else, something abstract. And here's the key. These are things we only see in humans, not our earlier ancestors, not other animals. So it's like this distinctly human thing. Absolutely. So we've got the potential for complex thought for language, maybe around 135,000 years ago, and then boom, 35,000 years later, we see these external signs, these expressions of that complexity in the archeological record. It's like those cognitive seeds finally starting to sprout. Okay, so there's this gap, this lag time. Do the researchers connect those two timelines in any way? They absolutely do. In fact, researchers like Ian Tattersall, one of the co-authors, they propose that language itself might have been the trigger. Like once the sophisticated communication system was in place, it basically unlocked all these other incredible human abilities. Like it set the stage for everything else. Exactly. Think about it. Language allows us to learn so much faster than any other animal. We can share intricate ideas, pass on knowledge through generations. We can build on what others have learned, create these complex cultural practices. It's like language gave us the instructions, the blueprint for building this whole elaborate structure of human thought and behavior. So language 
as the catalyst, the missing piece that allowed everything else to fall into place. That's a pretty powerful idea, but I'm guessing there are other viewpoints on this. Not everyone agrees that language was the only driving force. You're sharp. And the researchers do acknowledge that there are other perspectives. Some scientists believe that the emergence of these new behaviors, those symbolic expressions, it was more of a gradual thing, a combination of factors. Okay, I can see that. Like multiple pieces of the puzzle coming together. Right. So this other view emphasizes the development of new technologies, more advanced tools, using different materials in innovative ways, and also the rise of more complex social structures, how we interact and cooperate with each other. So language is still part of the picture, but not necessarily the sole driving force. Exactly. It's like the classic debate, nature versus nurture, or in this case, maybe one big innovation versus a more gradual accumulation of changes. It's a fascinating discussion, and it's still ongoing. Science in action. Okay, let's go back to the genomic evidence for a minute. Mm -hmm. Earlier, you mentioned the Khoisan peoples of Southern Africa. How do they fit into this timeline? What makes them so important? Great question. So the Khoisan are really interesting because genetic studies suggest they represent the earliest branch to split off from the main Homo sapiens lineage. Basically, their ancestors were among the first to diverge from the rest of us. Like way back in time. Way back. But here's the thing. Despite that early split, the Khoisan have full linguistic capacity, just like any other human group. Their languages are complex, nuanced. They have all the features we associate with human language. So even though they branched off early, they still develop this complex way of communicating. Precisely. And that's crucial because it tells us something really important. It means that the capacity for language had to be present before that split even happened. If the Khoisan have it and everyone else has it, their common ancestor must have had it too. It's like that family heirloom analogy again. Exactly. Now, based on this whole genome single nucleotide polymorphism data, you know, the really detailed stuff, that split, that branching off of the Khoisan ancestors, it's estimated to have happened around, you guessed it, 135,000 years ago. All right. It all lines up. Okay, this is getting really interesting. So the earliest split we know of, around 135,000 years ago, and both branches, both the Khoisan and everyone else, they developed complex language. It really points to that capacity being there from the get-go. Right. And the paper also talks about other genetic markers, like the Y chromosome. And those estimates, they also cluster around that same time frame, around 135,000 years ago. It's pretty consistent. Wow. So multiple lines of evidence diverging. Yeah, it's pretty compelling. Now, there's one interesting wrinkle. Mitochondrial DNA, remember, that's the one passed down from mothers, that shows a slightly different median divergence time closer to 110,000 years ago. Oh, why the discrepancy? Well, it likely reflects complexities in how those early human populations moved and intermixed. But the consistency among those other markers, the Y chromosome, the whole genome data, it really points to that earlier date as being significant. So let's recap. We've got the capacity for language likely present by 135,000 years ago, and then those signs of symbolic behavior popping up around 100,000 years ago. This gap, this roughly 35,000 year interval, how do the researchers interpret that? What's the big takeaway? Well, they believe that gap is crucial. Their idea is that once language was fully developed, once it became this powerful tool we use today, it played a huge role in shaping all those behaviors we see as like the hallmarks of modern human culture. So it wasn't just about having the potential. It was about language providing the framework, the blueprint for putting all those cognitive pieces together. Exactly. Like, imagine you've got all these individual puzzle pieces, all these amazing cognitive abilities, but language, it's like the picture on the box, the instructions that show you how to connect them, how to create this beautiful, complex image of the world. It allowed us to organize our thoughts, to share information in incredibly nuanced ways, to pass down knowledge, and to develop shared understandings that made those symbolic expressions, those cave paintings, those rituals possible. It's like language became the operating system for human culture. That's a perfect analogy. And, you know, the paper also touches on this ongoing debate in the field, the whole gradualist versus saltational view. Oh, yeah, those different ideas about how language evolved. Mm -hmm. Right. The gradualists, they think language emerged slowly, step by step over a long period, while the saltational view, they think it might have been more rapid, maybe even a sudden burst of change. The researchers here, they acknowledge that this genomic evidence, it doesn't fully solve that debate, but it does give us a really solid lower boundary, a starting point for when the potential was there. We know it was likely present at least 135,000 years ago, even if we don't know every detail of how it unfolded. That's still a huge step forward. So 
After this deep dive into all this fascinating research, it seems like the evidence is pointing towards a pretty clear conclusion. The capacity for human language, this unique system of words and grammar, it was there at least 135,000 years ago, and that's tens of thousands of years before we see those widespread signs of symbolic behavior in the archaeological record. It suggests that language might have played a much bigger role than we ever imagined, not just in communication, but in shaping our entire culture, our way of thinking, everything that makes us human. Couldn't have said it better myself. The genomic data offers a powerful argument for this timeline, for the idea that the hardware for complex communication was already online, ready to go, relatively early in our journey as Homo sapiens. It really makes you think, doesn't it? If this incredibly powerful tool was available for so long, maybe even in those early, more basic forms, before those big cultural shifts, what was that early language like? How did it sound? How did it shape their thoughts, their interactions? And what does this timeline tell us about how human innovation works? how cultures develop. It's like we had this incredible capacity for so long, hidden potential just waiting to be unlocked. And that raises even bitter questions, right? If something as fundamental as language could exist, maybe in a simpler form, for tens of thousands of years before its full impact was really felt, what other capacities might we have right now, hidden potential within us, waiting for the right conditions to emerge? What other softwares of thought and interaction might be out there ready to reshape our world in ways we can't even imagine yet? It's a pretty mind-blowing thought to leave you with. I think that's a perfect place to end. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive, everyone. Until next time, keep those brains buzzing. Always a pleasure.